Hey everyone, Wanderbot here, and welcome to Ixion, uh, or at least a preview of it, sort of. This is actually going to be a two-part sponsored video series where I check out the prologue, and then we come back for more when the game's actually out. So, Ixion is coming out on December 7th. Uh, I do not know price tags or anything like that, but it's made by Bulwark Studios and published by Casado Games, who are kind enough to actually reach out and sponsor this video. So with that, let's dive right in. I guess I should probably explain what it is. You're building a space station and journeying across the stars to find a new home for humanity. It looks like a combination between, I want to say like Space Station 13, and I'm not actually sure what else. It looks beautiful. It's been on my to-do list for forever. And I've actually been, well, to-do list, my wish list for forever. And I've been, uh, I just holding off and waiting for the game to actually come out. I've seen it go by in at least a couple of demo festivals, I think, and I was like, oh, I wanna. But now we just get to play the full thing, kind of, sort of. I'm playing the Gamescom preview demo. Oh, hello. I love this kind of music. You know, I never thought about it, but balancing that has got to be a nightmare. You know, with the shuttle on the side? I don't think about low-tech sci-fi space travel that much, oddly enough. You know, our, our tech level. You know, I'm surprised with this. That I'm surprised they'd have a station like this built up in space already without a space elevator to go with it. Like I, I actually really like the idea of space elevators. And so I was kind of surprised that they'd launch up here. I figured this is just going to be the initial setup, but the answer is no. We're actually on the station already and ready to go. Shuttle EMV Sharon is now docked. Oh, I'm getting Sector some homeworld vibes. Empowered and pressurized. But it's actually a city Mushy builder. Decontamination protocol online. Disembarkation authorized. Message to crew members. Welcome on board the Tycoon, property of Dolus Aerospace Engineering Corporation. You will soon be given your assignments, but until then, please continue to wait near the docking bay. We hope you have a productive voyage, and we'd like to thank you for your contribution towards humanity's future. Administrator, I am Eden, the personal assistant installed on board the Tycoon. In accordance with the Munchie Protocol, I have been designed to take into consideration your complete psychological profile so that I may more accurately respond to any needs you may have. My primary purpose is to ensure the Tycoon's automated systems function efficiently. I will keep track of the tasks that are necessary for you to fulfill your prerogative of reaching Proxima Centauri 
and carrying out field research, mining operations, manufacturing protocols, and Dolo's colonization tests. Let's see, is this alloy? There we go. So the tutorial, oh, we have more transmissions. Oh, and yep, we can just rotate down this. Uh, so the tutorial is fairly open-ended. It guides you, but it doesn't like railroad you, which I appreciate. Administrator, I wanted to introduce you to your first tasks person. I'm Dolos' cryonics lead, Marduk council member, Giovanni Bittista. So, let's see. Your first objective will be to begin setting up essential infrastructure aboard the Tycoon, meeting the environmental conditions that are required to support your crew. Having laid these foundations, you will then oversee the installation of the Volt engine and perform a short test jump to Proxima Centauri. Upon arrival, your research teams will carry out a brief survey of local space, gather a few rock and coal dust samples, Fire up the colonization protocol, begin building the foundations for mankind's future, yada yada yada. And then, you'll come back. Now, in order to achieve this, you'll need to familiarize yourself with the Tycoon's core functions. It's no big deal. There's the production, stockpiling and distribution of resources, construction, balancing of power output with allocation. Oh, and space exploration, you know, setting out expeditions and all that. Basically, everything needed to establish scientific advancement and harmonious autonomy on board the Tycoon, following the first test of its Vol engine. Eden's gonna display and keep track of your main objectives. Oh, and Administrator, don't let the position go to your head. Veneer has insisted to center Dolos's focus on the Tycoon, but this mission is just in preparation for our next project, the Protagoras. The Marduk Council worked damn hard to pull this mission together ahead of schedule. So, toe the line, do as you're told, and bring the Tycoon back in one piece. Leave the grand gestures and saving of mankind from ecosystemic destruction to us, okay? One last word of advice. We don't all think like Veneer Dolos. As of yet, no human law has been officially established amongst the stars. That sounds like an opportunity knocking to me. Okay, so we've got to connect all these roads and we can just build stuff. Oh, and we have more transmissions. I guess I'm just going to be listening to a lot of transmissions for a while. But honestly, voice acting is pretty good. I like it. Administrator, I have established a connection with Dolus' lead data scientist, Emma Klein. Oh. Administrator, Mr. Dolos has made it abundantly clear when it comes to security. Given the importance of the Tycoon, we must have full control over what is happening inside the station. My name is Emma Klein, Dolos's lead data scientist and member of the Marduk Council. My department have just completed final synchronization between Eden and our data treatment tool, the DLS. The DLS, or data listening system, is capable of scanning, recording, and parsing exchanges of any kind. The DLS programming that is a part of Eden will filter all data collected and bring to your attention only the most relevant information. It will also provide you with a condensed overview of any situations that may arise and formulate potential future outcomes. It will permit you to give direct orders without having to go through additional unnecessary paperwork. Eden will then take care of everything via their DLS accreditation. As is often the case with tools produced by my department, I think you'll find that once you start using the DLS, you'll never be able to do without it. Oh, and before I let you go ahead and start writing history, Dr. Munshi, our lead medical expert, wanted me to bring to your attention a possible side effect of vol jumping. Whilst there is a correlation between prolonged space travel and the development of early onset dementia, he believes that a vol jump has the potential to accelerate this process, although this is yet to be proven. His recommendation is for you to immediately send any crew members that are exhibiting uncharacteristic or symptomatic behavior to an infirmary, as these facilities are equipped to treat the mind as well as the body. Remember that all of your actions and choices are being recorded by Eden. We are not affiliated with any national or even international organization. The only people that you are answerable to 
are those of us who sit on the Mardic Council, who represent the collective interests and ambitions of the company. Administrator, a new request awaits your attention. Okay. Answering requests. Oh, magnifying lens represents a data listening system event. Oh. Can be planetary exploration events or exploration events on the planetary system, crew requests inside the tycoon. Uh, let's see. Do we have that right here? Yep. Administrator, tycoon members are currently have currently have no means of collecting food supplies from storage. Analysis analysis suggests impending crisis due to an influx of hungry crew. Subsequent accident rates are predicted to rise by 64.7%. Neocon's social ecosystem theories direct that mess halls can be used to both ration and distribute food provisions in stellar in a stellar habitat setting. A com commitment to providing food for the crew would affirm your position as a competent administrator. Well, I mean, that's easy. Hey, <laughs> look at that there. I'm already good. So the only thing we need to worry about is making sure we have enough food, but it looks like we have plenty of supplies. Administrator, I have an incoming transmission from Marduk Council Member Henry Bargeville. Bonjour, Administrator. What a wonderful day to embrace your faith, don't you think? I am Henri Bargeville, writer, philosopher, lobbyist, but most of all member of the Marduk Council. I have taken the liberty of personally arranging an exchange out of courtesy with the Oshanabi, a ship in high orbit belonging to one of our commercial allies, the Ashton guys. Even so, they are a small organization. The oh, okay. So next up, we need crew quarters. Sorry for interrupting that guy. Boy, his accent is thick. Ashton guides are important partners who share the same pragmatic, moralistic, and spiritual outlook as we do. The Ushanabi will provide us with a source of food while carrying out the Tycoon's initial test. By making it the first exclusive trade partner of the Tycoon, we will demonstrate to our long-term allies that Dolos wishes for them to share in our successes. Please assign a cargo ship so that we can check the trade routines. Administrator, trust in genetic connectors. Self similar space will reveal the pattern. Okay, I think we're good. I like those requests. I'm very glad that this seems to be pretty. Ooh, hi. Cargo ship in docking bay one, science ship in docking bay one. And then we're still working on the housing. So, health, no active health. It events, nothing to worry about. I need to build a science thing, uh, which is a factory. Problem was, it's freaking huge. Damn. I was kind of hoping I could get rid of this first before I build it, just because it is kind of wildly large, and I have all these stockpiles in my way. Obviously, I could build one of these, but I'd rather not. It doesn't seem like it can move anything. So... I don't know, I think I might let them quickly build the, uh... I might, might let them build their housing first. Do we actually want to build a second, um, construction area now that I'm thinking about it? Yeah, let's get another workshop. Obviously, we seem to be kind of low on alloys, but clearing a number of these things out seems like it would do the trick. Uh, let's see. Extend that there. And yeah, we might as well connect largely everything here. But once we get the housing done, I think we'll be fine. Okay, and I still have plenty of time. I appreciate this. A lesser game would have just kind of railroaded you on the tutorial. This one let me get way ahead. And obviously, I've got a couple of things with, like, clear consequences of, yeah, you're going to need to finish these objectives, otherwise you're going to be in trouble. But, because it's kind of, uh, well, a little bit more loose, question mark? I don't know if loose is the right word. Uh, flexible is probably a better one. But be because it is so flexible, I can kind of just chill and not worry, worry about it. Now, do we want to get another stockpile? Yeah, I'll do another stockpile. This... This time for alloys. 
Because we want to stockpile all of this stuff. My only immediate fear is that I might have not enough. And I can't quite tell how many... So 85, uh, 85 of my people are workers. My main question is how many of them are actually employed as workers? I don't seem to see anything for that, unfortunately. Okay, and... Oh, it's... Oh, wait, hold up. I can actually just get this giant sucker down right here. It's not the best spot, but I can get rid of the pre-existing road. There we go. Okay, so we've got tutorial for mess halls and food storage, which we're already good on. Everything else is going. We do have to worry about power, but honestly, once we get this, then we won't have to worry about tech because I think we'll be able to start unlocking stuff. Otherwise, we're going to finish this tutorial and then I don't know. Oh, right. Uh, workshop structure docking bay. Oh, uh, oh. Can I build two of these? I have no idea. Administrator, a new request awaits your attention. Okay. So if we go, oh boy, look at that tech tree. That's a good feel. So, interesting. So there's the mining ship, but then there's also six upgrades that can be researched. Better drilling, leech drilling, filters, protocol, UI, some other stuff. EVA airlock repairs the hull and can, uh, can construct exterior structures. Probes, tech lab, insect farm, converting... Uh, okay, so that gets us actual food food. Alright, I'm probably going to work on that. Hopefully we have access to the rest of these. Um, maybe we just need the science ship. Because it looks like we have a whole bunch already researched. We just can't build it for some reason. Small well, deficit of workers. Oh. Okay, well, I can't do much with that. Oh. Can I cancel this thing? Go back to this. Cancel building. Okay, it's in demolition. I can go back to this. And we can build the mining ship, the cargo ship, and the science ship. We need a cargo ship and a science ship. I was wondering, I was like, I already have a docking bay. Do I need another one of these? And the answer is no. It's just each docking bay has three. Probably should have looked at that first, but it's fine. Okay. So, configure the cargo ship to retrieve fuel or food. Okay. Fly depot. Where? Resources to collect food. Oh, we built our science ship first. Oh, I can move already. How do we go back? Tycon exterior, interior. No. I see. I just had to select it. And we're good. Resolve the moon event via the planetary system. So that's the exterior view. And then planetary. Waiting for a science ship. The base is out of commission. Auxiliary systems are operational. May be used to restore power. There's an average probability of finding resources. Okay, and our science ship is going. This is actually science quite possibly one of the most interesting city built city settlement builders I've ever seen. It's very streamlined, and the fact that we can potentially move around is really cool. So the base is out of commission, blah blah blah, we already saw that. We've reached the UN base using the provided coordinates. It's abandoned and depressurized, but the video surveillance system is still functional, awaiting orders. Exploit the vulnerability, dismantle the camp. Okay, let's go with the information first and foremost. Okay, tutorial for overwork. Most buildings need workers. However, a sector doesn't have enough workers, its inhabitants will turn uh, turn to overwork to keep the facilities running correctly. 
Overwork is based on the total number of workers needed in active buildings in the sector and the number of fit workers present. So safety, if you don't have enough, okay, so less safe lead to accidents. Overwork can be checked in the sector view. And reduce overwork, either turn off some buildings or increase the sector's population of workers by awakening cryopods or transferring crew from other sectors. Okay, well I don't have much to do, so I guess we'll just speed this up until we're done. A science ship team has completed a task. 90 science. Oh, dang. And then we can also dismantle it. We hacked into the main computer systems as you ordered and found several relevant research papers and data sets. We'll start working on that. So now that we've done that, if I take a look at tech tree. Oh. I was hoping that that 90 science we'd bring back with us would actually be worth something, but unfortunately not. Well, let's go back out here. We got a little bit of time. Okay, cycles are a time unit. We can see all this. Probe launcher is required. Vol engine. We also do the have. Team has completed a task. Ah, now they're completing the science. Okay, and camp is camp has been dismantled. Although much of the equipment was damaged, we were able to prepare some usable resources for extraction. Okay. So that expands what we've got. We've got notifications. And yeah, the moon just has resources to collect. Science, science ship seems to be grabbing it all. So we also have... Uh, UN have established a facility on Mars and currently lacking materials required to repair a critical fart. The fart. I have an incoming transmission from Dolus's head of medicine, Dr. Abhinav Munchi. Greetings, Administrator. I'm Dr. Abhi. Namuchi, Tolu's expert in compartmentalism and medicine, and a member of the Marduk Council. I'm glad to finally meet you, even in this digital manner. Your psychological test results were quite impressive. My friend and colleague, Philip Stanford, couldn't be here today, so I will take the role of introducing you to the final stages of the Vol engine integration. Before we get into that, however, we would like you to complete the testing station's exploration and enhancement capabilities. You'll then be able to begin researching the EVA airlock and assess its compatibility with the Tycho's core systems. I hope that the work of our team will ensure that you are equipped to deal with most situations you encounter up there. Before I leave you, Stanford would like me to remind you that space is a far less fanciful and forgiving environment than science fiction would have us believe. It would be wise to remember that. I see. 90, 95 workers are required and we have 79 available. I don't know how to wake up more people. Uh, let's see. Water, batteries, sector. I don't know. Okay, tech and upgrades. Tech lab, tech tree, and upgrades. So most tech can also be upgraded. That's something I probably should have looked at. Uh, let's see. Tycoon hull, solar panels. But they're all locked. Requires technology tier 3 to access most of these. Yeah, so even if I wanted... Wow, some of these actually have quite a lot of upgrades behind them. However, almost all of them require tech tier 3 to be unlocked. Which I'm assuming we get just by finishing all three of these, and then we can go out of ring. Administrator, due to it... Okay, so new objective, construct an EVA airlock. Well, we're still working on deconstructing this. However, I think we're currently researching the, oh, probe launcher. And I can queue it up. Sick. I appreciate that. How are we doing on food? Decent, and then hopefully this thing will actually be able to produce some food. Turning it off was, yeah, a bit of a mistake, but still. 
Okay. If I go back in here... I mean, honestly, I might as well just tell it to go retrieve everything. There's no reason not to. Okay. And then everything else is good. Because, yeah, we still have a decent amount of food sitting around. We're not constructing much of anything. I can turn this back on. Unless the EVA airlock turns out to be kind of expensive, at which point, eh. Okay, so I'm just gonna... Whoop. We had a event that I totally missed. Okay, so we have the probe launcher, but it's too expensive. I should have made the EVA airlock a long time ago. Well, here's the other thing I could do. Start cleaning up some of these roads. Okay, anything else I need to do? Not overwhelmingly, no, so we'll just kind of wait. Uh, we have some extra hours going. Uh, you know what? I ain't using this anytime soon. I'm just going to turn it off for now. I'll have to get some more people at some point. Let's see. Construct those just because we're here. Not that we need too many resources at the moment. And yeah, I'll figure out a better road setup for this later. Right now it doesn't really matter. Alright, and I should be back up to a very fast time speed. My, yeah, one, two, three. Every once in a while I run into a game that has like a completely boneheaded um, time control setup. Oof, EVA airlock is expensive. So I can't turn off the insect farm. I think actually... Oh, I see, that's just waste. Unfortunately, this is locked in the demo. So yeah, we, we can't exit this, this tech tree for the time being. So I'm actually just going to turn this off so we can build the EVA airlock, which is massive. Ah, uh, my kingdom for this thing being stripped down and removed. Uh, well, here's what I can do. Stockpile small. I do wish that the UI was a little bit more obvious for how many people, uh, how many workers I had doing various things, but what I'm going to do is probably just build the stockpiles and then decommission them. Uh, just turn them off. Because if I can do that... Are we okay on food? I think so. I don't know what our current... Okay. Looks like we're fine, actually, food-wise. Perfect homeostasis. I was a little worried about starvation. Anyway, um... Yeah, so I'm just going to build these, fill them up as much as possible. So finally deconstruct this thing, then rebu rebuild the EVA airlock. Uh, and effectively, every every time these fill up, just shut them off and just leave them like that. Because they can just hold the resources indefinitely. Oh, you know what? I am a fool. There it is. Okay, structure, EVA airlock. I forgot to actually select what resource goes into them. Man, look at them go when they actually have uh, space to put things. And yeah, let's just start recycling. Because the sooner we can get all these recycled, the less we have to worry about long term. Okay, so this one's full and done, so we can just ignore it. And now I can get rid of all of these extraneous roads that I don't need. Alright, you. External construction. Oh, we can build some stuff. Solar panel set one. Set two. And then we also have special, the Vol engine. Okay, so I'm going to have to turn some stockpiles back on. But it'll give me all the power we need. And also re one alloy repairs one whole unit. All right, but that's that's a for later thing. Let's go back into this. Speed it up. 
turn this back on. We just barely have enough power. Thank you. And you can actually see these getting filled up. And as soon as that's done, then we can just... Uh, well, actually, no. We'll probably still want to kind of flip some of these things on and off just to allocate people. So there's solar panel set one. Now you can just be off. Yeah, they're really good at transferring resources, which I appreciate. There's not a whole lot of fiddly bits with this game. There's still some fiddliness, but it's not much. Okay. I guess other order of business. We might as well connect all of these and start grabbing the resources in them. Just to get them out of the way. Not that it matters too much. Because of your continued successful management of the Typhoon, Dolos have authorized the dispatch of new crew members and food supplies. Please ensure that they have suitable accommodation once you reach Proxima Centauri. Administrator, a new request awaits your attention. Okay, bring the remaining workers from Ursunami on board. Oh, we also have this. Food supplies are dwindling drastically. Okay, so food's gonna run out. Two insect farms in eight cycles. Well, that's easy enough, and we've got plenty. <laughs> Refuse. Dolo's administrators are not beholden to a rumor. I... So many of these, like, weird side quests are, uh, weirdly dark. Alright. Like, screw you, I don't need to worry about food. It's like, uh, yeah, you kinda do. Okay, so if I take a look at Thor, is it actually bringing in people? Yes. So we got 150 food on the way, and then also 100 more people, which we desperately are going to need. Oh, you can actually see our food per cycle. There, it's eight. Okay, anything else I need to build out here? Oh. I don't have a whole lot of resources, so I don't want to build too many of these. Okay, other thing we can do, Einstein. I'm going to send it out to Mars, which, you know, should probably take a while. And yeah, once we're done with the Ursinavi, I guess I could, uh, I could, I guess I could actually fly the whole station. Because I think I can fly the whole station. I might fly it out to Mars. And then to, was that Uranus or something? Or Neptune? Not entirely sure, it doesn't really matter. Okay, how are we doing? These are fine. We've got plenty of power. The only immediate problem is we are lacking long-term supplies here. So, obviously that's going to run into some problems eventually. So, let's just pay attention to the Thor. It looks like it moves about 50 things at a time. That's fine. And, oh yeah, we got, we got plenty of food. And we should be gathering more. Recent balance, average balance. And yeah, it wouldn't be a bad idea to get a second storage for food at some point and just shut it off. Actually, let's do that now. Because building the stockpile costs very little. Administrator, the different phases of preparation, calibration, and verification were successfully completed. You must now start the full bonding procedure. Dolo's protocols now deem you competent to gather resources, knowledge, and test colonization routines once you reach Proxima Centauri. Before you do so, Vanir Dolos, Marduk Council Founder and Dolos CEO, wants to talk to you. Okay, before we do that, uh, let's see. Ooh. Repair the oxygen system in exchange for research data, or just resources. We don't really need research data. Okay, so let's send that over. That's going to take a little while. But we do have some events. Hello, Administrator. I'm glad to see that you have managed to complete your assignments in preparation for this unique moment in history. You must understand that this is not simply another chapter in humanity's story. The book of our life on Earth is over, and we stand now at its epilogue. It saddens me to think that there are many who have yet to comprehend the reality of our situation. 
We've endured endless cycles of Oops. I didn't realize that would just be a war, oh. crisis, and famine. Still, the worst is yet to come. There are others like Dolos who have prepared for this outcome. But most of our kind remain sheltered from the horror of the predicament we find ourselves in. This pale ghost of civilization will wither and die. And with it, the tenets and values of the past. As we prepare to leave this system for the first time, perhaps we must decide which fragments we will pick up and take forward with us. Through Dolos, I am offering mankind an alternative means of survival. Tycoon is a tablet upon which we will carve our new history. Do you recognize why I have done all of this? Having foreseen our fate, I became fixated on altering it. I set about fashioning the ropes and tying the knots that would bind together this magnificent ship. It is true that our time in this world is brief, but at least I can rest assured knowing that my legacy will endure for eons. Farewell, Administrator. For the few who stand in the light and the many who dwell in the dark, you carry the fate of us all. Okay. I like th I like this. There's like actual sectors and chapters to this. So, despite the fact that it is a a city builder town builder, okay. Resources are in transit, ships on the way. Where is my ship? Hopefully it's just here. Ship team has completed a task. Oh, we got it. And we get a bunch of resources. Sick. Very much the kind of resources we actually need. Because data I can just get over the course of time. Okay, food per cycle is 18. So I think we actually are going to need a third insect farm here. Here's the other question. I have a mess hall. Up to 500 crew members. Okay, we're fine. So the main question is just do we have enough housing for all of this? And are... Can, I don't know. The other thing I might want to do is actually break the tech lab. Not that it matters too much. I guess I shouldn't do that. I should probably even turn it on. Because, yeah. We have 179 functional workers at the moment. Oh, you know what? I know why this, uh... That ain't working. Oh, yeah, I did leave a gap here. Ah, that's going to bother me, but there's no way I can fix it. And it's fine. Okay. Oh, you know what? I might as well turn this sucker on too. We don't have enough builder mechs. So we can do, we can supply all the resources we need, but we uh, still cannot build. Okay, because I do not have much alloy left. However, we have no more dura uh, m no more deliveries. So I'm actually going to get one more of these. Oh, move the Tycoon into orbit on the moon. Oops. Let's take a look. We have a science ship. A signature resembling that of an EKP propulsor has been detected. EKP technology is the exclusive property of Dolos. Their records indicate that the company has not deployed any missions to the sector. The signature will soon enter the atmosphere of Saturn. Might as well go check it out. I don't think I have too much else. We can even have a fleet later. Ooh. Yeah, it's like a really low, uh, like a lower sci-fi version of, um, okay, good. We have plenty of food. It's like a lower sci-fi version of Homeworld in like the best possible way. I've only ever played Homeworld 1, but I really liked it. But obviously, you know, it's, it's an RTS. This is more City Station Manager. But I like the mechanics being presented because it's a, it's a different flavor. You know, I'm a little Science tired of the medieval town builders. There's not a whole lot going on with those. Uh, let's see. So, signature, we've already read that. Let's send a team to investigate. It'll take three cycles. And then we'll move into the orbit of Mars, and then we'll get out of here. But, 
I'm a little tired of settlement builders set in kind of medieval times with maybe a little bit of fantasy. You know, I've played like a couple dozen of those at this point over the years. And while some of them are actually pretty good, most of them are just kind of humdrum and don't really have a whole lot of variance between. And so the idea of having one of these... Uh, can I actually gather resources from any of these? No, of course not. <laughs> Salvage the Ursanavi, much to that one guy's uh, displeasure. That'd be funny. A science ship team has completed a task. Okay. Pro prototype rocket sent by the UN seems to use a variation on EKP propulsion. We stripped it down and recovered informational schematics and resources. Okay, so we'll just collect the science and we'll get out of here. Our trust is good. Oh, and injuries. Okay, reducing risk. Uh, stability buildings are adopting different policies. Oh, there's going to be a policy system. Okay, and then we just have to wait for the Einstein to return. Can I, can I tell it to come back? I guess not. Well, we. I do appreciate that we don't have to wait, like, actual months for things to travel. Leet. Can I... Can I tell my science ship to return? If I leave without it, it's gonna be really funny. <laughs> Luckily, it doesn't matter that much. Okay, and it looks like we don't actually take damage from this. So, my assumption is whatever extra power that we're not using gets turned into impulse movement for moving the tycoon around so presumably the more power i can supply to it the faster it'll move it it does look like we're quote unquote losing hull integrity but maybe we just don't lose it here okay and vol jump okay all power available batteries will take the role of powering sectors if present oh i see so why don't we why don't we wait a moment? Or no, that's our power grid. I don't quite know if I have to worry about batteries at all. Looks like no, so... Let's just hope my science ship comes back because otherwise it's just... We're gonna leave it behind. Oh, we'll automatically return. Cool. I was a little concerned. I love near future sci-fi. I also love far future sci-fi, but there's something like really hopeful about near future stuff. Where technology hasn't gone like full... Ooh, that's interesting. Uh, where you don't go full science magic, where stuff is like slightly plausible. Like, I'm thinking of the Expanse, where, where the technology really is quite grounded and fairly reasonable from a, what the hell is going on here? I don't know, but it looks really cool. I think that has to be one of the most interesting portrayals of interstellar transit I've ever seen the earth our home she is unique held in its bosom are the ingredients of evolution beyond raw survival beyond the safety of comfort we humanity pursue something greater we have learnt, persevered, shaped our knowledge from that which is found in the furthest realms of science. However, humanity has brought destruction to the earth, polluted its blood, choked its breath. Today we are paying the price for this. We know the taste of a dying world. But the earth is not to be our grave. A mother does not wish to see her children disappear with her. She wishes to see instead courage in her children to carry on. Dolos carries this courage. 
We have gone further than any nation, moved faster than any corporation, hand in hand with those who, like us, carry that courage. The Tycoon Station is both an epilogue of these endeavors and a prologue to humanity's next steps. Our Council of Scientists leads the vanguard. They know, as do we all, that the survival of humanity now depends on what we glimpse out there in the dark. That we are masters of our own destiny. That we must go as a species bound together, pushing further into the unknown. We set sail on this new sea because there is hope to be found, horizons to explore, and because our very existence depends on it. I give you the stars. I give you the Vol Engine. Oh. We just eggmanned the moon. I knew something bad was going to happen. Congratulations, administrator, administrator, on the first successful test of the Vol Engine. The morale of the Tycoon crew is high as they prepare for the next step of their journey. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot continue because that is the end of the demo, at least for now. So, uh, I guess to repeat what I said earlier, Ixion will be out on December 7th. So, in uh, a little bit less than a month, give or take three weeks, or uh, time is time is imaginary. I really like this game. The production value is incredible. The music, the soundtrack, the visuals. Oh, it is everything I want out of station, settlement, whatever builders. And also, it departs from a lot of the conventions. I like it. And I, I can't wait to play more of this, to be entirely honest. I'm especially looking forward to traversing the stars, I guess, because I, I think we're going to be able to, like, go around and explore more. And I really like that. But with all of that said, I guess one last thank you to Bulwark Studios and Casido Games for reaching out and sponsoring this video. It was very kind of you and also a ton of fun. I, like I said, cannot wait to play more. And we'll be playing more as soon as the embargo on the, uh, the next stage comes out, which I think... I think it's going to be a launch day video. Uh, so when we pick this back up again, it'll be chapter two. We'll be a little bit further in and can start exploring the systems a little bit more fervently. Um, but with all of that said, if you guys like this video in any way, shape or form, leave me a like helps more than you know. And if you want to see more rad new indie games every single day, then hit subscribe because I've got tons to check out. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.